Uh, I'm Eddie. This is Zachary. This is Jay Boy. Um, I sing and strum on the guitar, plays drums, and uh, slap the bass. Well, uh, the Empire started as um, as a two piece um, three years ago, and that's a question mark. And yeah, it was a two piece, like really garage rockabilly. Um, and then uh, before my uh, before our, our first CD release tour, uh, my drummer broke up with me, and so I had to find some uh, some other way to, to continue the tour. And I wound up I found a bass drum and a hi hat. And uh, that was a tour that I did with the Dyes from Chicago. And um, I wound up, I had three days to prepare for the tour. And um, so I just put together a really simple, a simple uh, beat and um, played the entire tour. I wound up selling out of the CD and came back and I'm still um, doing the one man band, um, but just under my own name. Yeah. Um, and uh, I have went out with Pretty Things Peep Show for about a month, um, yeah, during August. Uh, I'm going back out with them again for two weeks in December and then going out with them for two months in January, February, March. That's awesome. So obviously so, a good experience. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing experience. And it works really well because it's got um, a sideshow element to it. Yeah. Who are as you know as the three of you? Who are your influences right now when you're writing music? Well, when you're listening like, to people? It's just go in order. Like mine, I'm definitely coming from like the cramps. Yeah. Um, has Atkins kind of uh, traditional psychobilly. Um, well, I guess the the psycho part comes in just more in my like punk rock background. Yeah. But um, I, I still like to keep it melodic and. Um, Build myself as a singer more than a guitarist. Like I can strum on the guitar, but I'm not good. But your pipes are killer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, That's funny. What about well. what about you? Hi. <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely punk. Uh, also classical music for sure. Um, that's pretty much about it. Who were some people that helped you get into what you do? Uh, my older brother. When I was like in fourth grade, started going to punk shows and started playing drums. Uh, I've been playing drums ever since, different bands, ranging from just like punk bands to indie rock to heavy metal bands, uh, and now with Rock Billy. Yeah. So, yeah. That's awesome. Yep. Now, do you do any one man? No, do you do I anything by yourself? Four other bands. Oh, so you're busy. Yeah, four bands in total, so yeah, I'm pretty busy. That's awesome. Are they all kind of this type of music, or? No, one of them, I guess, yeah, it ranges from like punk rock, street punk rock, to like folk, pop punk, to singer-songwriter stuff that I perform on drums. Um, yeah, it's well-rounded. That's great. So. so you have that musical ADD that I love. Yeah. Very yeah. well-rounded. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's cool. What about you? Uh, influences? Um, I guess as far as playing goes, like old school guys in rock group, Marshall Grant, Bill Black. Guys are really good too, yeah. Um, yeah are you are you just in the empires or are you in some other bands as well? That's crazy. This type of music, or are you also all over the board? Uh, I'm in two honky tonk bands and then a skate punk band. That's awesome. Very cool. So um, we took some pictures of your van. Um, I know you played last night, um, Big C. Yeah. So tell me about the van and how that all came about. That you got that <laughs> awesome artwork on there. Well, it was an afterthought. We um, we were driving down from Green Bay. We played Green Bay with the Coffin Cats on Tuesday night, and we didn't have anything to do the next day. It was kind of a day off, and so um, on the way down, we were going to stop off in Milwaukee and just set up a street show, um, just play someplace um, and um, we decided to skip Milwaukee and just go down to Chicago because we got a lot of friends down there and yeah. so we uh, what's that and couches and couches nice yeah, which we didn't have any <laughs> in Milwaukee and so um, as we were driving the thought came to me um, I was considering all the empty space in the van and I knew that my cousin um, knew a bunch of the local artists there um, including quite a few graffiti artists. And so um, 
I just texted him and asked him if any of his graffiti friends would be interested in um, throwing their name up on, on the side of the van or just, you know, doing something, drawing some characters or something. And uh, he was like, yeah, let me check. And so he goes straight for the top and winds up getting um, this dude uh, slang that's, like, been featured in, like, the uh, history of American graffiti. Wow. Stuff. Um, he started started doing, do you know how old he is? I think he's like in his forties. Yeah, pretty sure. Um, but so he's been around since yeah. he was fourteen. Yeah, fourteen years old. Wow. So the picture of he opened up the book when we got over to his studio on Wednesday night, and um, the picture of him in there was from like eighty one or eighty two, and it was him and one of his buddies who we also met while he was painting the thing, um, doing their like their b boy stance. Nice. And like, and they're like in their in their glasses and everything, and um, yeah, it was. Uh, like I don't know. At first, like I was a little bit freaked out because, like, I figured the guy, after having worked in the commercial world for so long and getting hired by all these these huge companies, that um, it was probably a little bit absurd for us to ask him to paint the side of our shitty van <laughs> for like five hundred bucks. That, which coming into Chicago, overheated, and I thought, like, I thought that was it. We're I done. Yeah. Was done. Yeah. <laughs> we've been, in fact, we've been putting missiles on it. On the, we've been stenciling bombs on the side for every show that it makes it to. Nice. Um, just to keep, just like I don't know. I didn't expect it to make it past like four or five. So years. it doesn't make it to all of them. Um. Well, no. Actually, the only show that it hasn't made it to was one in Mishawaka <gasps> that we were supposed to do an interview with you. Yeah. Ah, oh, look at that. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So, so what's to come for the empires? What can we look for? Well, we got the uh, new album called We Are the Empires um, coming out in um, late November, and it's a self-release, so um, we're trying to come up with the money for it Yeah. And everything, but uh, it'll be available on 7-inch and download. That's great. The website, and actually, uh, if people want to check it out, there's a free download of one of the songs on the website. Um, if you just go to the front page, there's like the three album covers, and you just click on those. The other two albums are available for free as well. That's great. Yeah. So, so is this album, you know, different from anything you guys have done in the past? Yeah. Or? Well, I mean, this is the first album with this lineup right here on it, and it's really exciting. Yeah. Like, the the rough mixes are huge. Yeah. You feel good about it? Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, yeah, we're really excited about it. Yeah. And it'll be a, be a good one. That's cool. So uh, I always I always ask for like a crazy story because bands always have the best stories. Um, and it usually takes people a little while to think about it, and that's cool. But Knoxville. <laughs> okay, yeah, Knoxville is really classic. Yeah. Um, so one of our first runs, uh, or one of our first stops on this last run, yeah. was um, in Knoxville, Tennessee, and um, we just gotten done playing a shitty show in Louisville, and. Um, you always just, like, hope for the best for the next show. Well, we get to Knoxville on a Sunday night, and this place is, like, as square as you can get. Like, we pull in, and there's, like, dudes walking by in, like, khaki cargo shorts in their polos, their backpacks on backs. Like, they're even, like, some of the, like, neo, like, neo prep, like, um, doing the whole, like, throwback style. Like, the, uh, um, what are those fucking shoes called? The deck shoes, the deck shoes <laughs> and like just like straight up like 80s oh boy rap style and um, so you're really amped for this show after seeing that yeah, right <laughs> but then we get to the bar and, and the bar seemed perfect i mean it smelled like somebody had pissed Everybody excellent on the bar. sleep on the porch yeah there was a mama sleep on the porch <laughs> was vinyl. there were sleepers all over the place <laughs> and um we get in there though and the entire situation turned into like the classic like um you know, Sex Pistols get run out of a bar by, like, the local rednecks. Um, they hated us. Oh! Um, one guy came through, and this is a big, kind of tough-looking, like, rocker-looking dude. He comes through, and, um, he's like, too damn loud! And he leaves, because we were too loud, and we are like, come on, tough guy. Yeah. Come on, stick around. <laughs> oh, that's funny. He takes off. He's like, you should go back to Indiana. <laughs> And uh, so we basically, we basically got run out. Um, it was it was terrible. Like nobody there. Okay, ex except for the Kurt Vonnegut looking dude. There, yeah, he, there's just some guy wandering around that looked like Kurt Vonnegut, and he seemed to kind of just get a kick out of like giving us a hard time. You could tell he kind of liked us. Yeah. 
Yeah. He wasn't gonna let anybody else know, though. No. Yeah. Including us. <laughs> who <was gonna> win <laughs> the whole time. Exactly. Yeah. But that dude, um, and I suppose was kind of acting like him too. Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. Um, Could have been. But uh, yeah, he was the only person um, that was kind of like we, we felt like he was on our side. Well, the bartender as well. There's and one uh, other dude too. He's got the pizza shop. Oh, all right. But anyway, we had to leave. We left there. We got to a Walmart parking lot, which is where we sleep a lot. And with, uh, we got some whiskey. Just decided to get drunk. And, um, getting in the Walmart parking lot drinking. And, uh, a cop had followed us in. And he comes up. And, uh, <laughs> he, uh, he's like, well, um, you need to get that bottle of whiskey back out here. And he's like, I also need to see everybody's IDs. And so he takes the IDs back to the car, and we're all just sitting there waiting. And he comes back, he's like, well, you guys are clean. Um, he's like, I don't know, keep the whiskey bottle inside the van and don't go anywhere. And we're like, well, yeah, I mean, that was the plan. That was yeah. the original plan. But then Walmart security had had something else in mind. Like, they uh, apparently, well, the dude was saying that they'd gotten a bunch of complaints. And, um manager had come to him and she was like you need to get rid of that van back there what were you guys doing we were just drinking in the van and uh, <laughs> yeah like no one was outside we're all in yeah the van pretty quiet. yeah it was like it was drunk. thank god i wasn't painted at that drunk. point <laughs> yeah jordan was oh sleeping. jordan was okay one of the guys was sleeping on top of the van okay and, makes a uh, difference <laughs> i guess they saw it in the security camera but the comment from the security guard was like well you know, if you guys were in that $20,000 RV that's parked over there, you'd be fine. And, like, they wouldn't give you shit about it. But since you're sitting here in this, like, obviously punk rock van, like, we're going to have to ask you to leave. Shitty. And, uh, so, yeah, we had to take off. And uh, at this point, super, super tired. Just looking for a spot. We wound up finding a uh, place to sleep in the parking lot. Um, Outside of like the creepiest truck stop that I've ever been to, had glory holes. Like, oh. it's my it's favorite part about car shows. Yeah. And um, but then there was a fresh one too. Wasn't Jordan in there? Where? Wasn't he the one that reported on like the fresh glory hole that had been drove? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. And yeah. there was like stuff built up, like caked Stuff. in there. So they were used. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. They weren't for show. No. <laughs> um, so that was, um, yeah, and then we got out of Knoxville the next morning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that was like, that was one of the more interesting stories just from the past tour. That's awesome. Bands always run into stuff that no one else does. Oh, yeah. Glory holes. Yeah. Glory holes. Yeah, like who, who else am I interview where they talk about glory holes? Uh, <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> That's well, awesome. Though we played a place that was obviously a drug front. It was like some ex Jamaican gangster that <laughs> that runs this little spot, and uh, it was obviously not a real bar. Yeah. Where were the empires? And uh, thanks for having us on Derelicts and Dames. Um, yeah, check us out at www.theempires.com and derelictsanddames.com. <laughs>